a separate group of colleagues and I have been writing an uh, analytical review piece on the authentic, authenticity and authentic leadership articles in the field of management studies. Um, and within that, we notice that even though most of these studies do not speak explicitly to power, um, they're really capturing a set of dynamics about how expressing ourselves can increase a sense of personal power, um, social power as well from the leadership standpoint, but there's also differential access to the permission to deviate or not from standards or prototypes. So in terms of leadership style, you know, if you align more with the prototype for leadership, so that abstract, idealized picture or portrait of what leaders look like, how leaders act, how leaders talk, um, which in Western contexts is usually white, male, um, and upper class, heterosexual, that performing leadership according to that style is easier if that's already your profile and your cultural conditioning. If it's not your profile or cultural conditioning, then you are automatically dealing with attention around how to engage in leadership style, whether values are on the table or not. It's just a matter of how you perform identity in order to, for the claiming granting process, you know, establish leadership rapport and have that dynamic affirmed by the others in the room. But as we go down the list, it gets more and more challenging for some people to bring their whole selves to work than it does for others. So Pat Hewlett's research, uh, Pat's over at, uh, at McGill, and her research on facades of conformity for the past 20 years well documents the cost of feeling that as though you have to pretend like you conform to the values of the organization if in fact you do not. And she finds that people who are members of numerically or historically underrepresented groups have to use more facades of conformities because the values within the corporation don't always align with their cultural conditioning and perspectives. Cultural, cultural expressions. Um, interesting research by Tina Opie and Kathy Phillips on hairstyle um, and whether or not black women straighten their hair such as my hair is straightened now um, and I used heat to straighten my hair. I used a flat iron to straighten my hair. My hair is naturally curly but I rarely wear it curly. But even with my natural curl, it's a finer curl pattern. Um, for women whose hair is thicker and has a tighter curl pattern, when they wear those natural hairstyles, they are in experiments, um, in experiments, so these are hypothetical scenarios, which of these people would you be most likely to hire for the job, okay? That the women who have the natural hairstyles that reflect the ethnic hair texture, they're less likely to be selected for those jobs. So they're not doing anything to, uh, to, to intentionally impose their values or, or beliefs in that moment. They're simply wearing their hair the way it grows out of their head. Um, so the advice to just be yourself, you know, even in something that is it's not really a disclosure choice at all, it's just this is how my hair grows and this is how I'm wearing it today, can be met with a set of resistance or backlash if it's not aligned with the cultural code or prototype of the organization.